<clears throat> First off, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Chakwadash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Shalom, salutations to the hopeful elect that's fighting a good fight of faith and truth and sincerity and wholeheartedly. And shalom to the Aqua, which is the women believers. Shalom to you. This video should be quick where we see what the spirit do, but I'll just meditate on this because, um, you know, when you're going through things, you'd be like, man, this is hard. You know, you, you get, you get down in the spirit sometimes and then you'd be like, man, you know, but being chastised is a beautiful thing because I always look at it from this perspective. You got people in the world. I'm talking about Israelites. You got people in the world who really smiling every day. Life is grand. You know, you got the rich of our people. I mean, you got people playing basketball, making $40 million a year just to shoot a three pointer dunk of basketball, man. They doing, they grew up, you know, wanting to be an NBA player. And then their dream actually came true. That's no chastisement right there, you know? And since they did get everything that they heart desire, they're not getting disciplined by the Lord. They're not getting corrected. Cause that's what is that's what it means. But let me read this first. Behold, happy is the man whom the most high corrective. Therefore, despise not thou the chastening of the almighty. And sometimes you do get into the despising, into the spirit, you know, revive you. See, I'm I'm serious over here. I don't I don't lie when it comes to this type of stuff. It's been plenty of times I've been down in the spirit and saying this ain't fair. And Lord, please take me back to the spirit world. I've been getting my ass beat. And I'm pretty sure I ain't the only because the scripture said the same prompts that you have is accomplishing your brethren. That's first Peter's five and nine. So. Oh, and he also say in first uh, Corinthians 10 and 13 that he will not um, tempt you above that you are able to handle. But but he will give you a way to escape. And I'm still here. Call Halal Yahweh Bashem Al Bashai. But it's been plenty of days where I've been brought down to my knees saying this is unfair. I didn't ask to be here. I'd rather be in the spirit world. But then when you start reading the scriptures, uh Paul had that same sentiment. Job had that same sentiment. He had a whole chapter, verse uh chapter three. Wishing that he was never born. Oh, Solomon said in um um, 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 matter of fact, let me get that one. I, I, I love that scripture right there. Uh, so it said, if a man beget a hundred children and live many years, so the days of his years be many and his soul, soul be not filled with good. And also he have no burial. I say that an untimely birth is better than he see. So what is the point of living a life, you know, Going through bullshit all the time. But it is worth it. That's what we're about to get. Let's continue. For he cometh in vanity. This this is Solomon right here. This is the man who had a hundred a thousand wives, well, seven hundred wives, three hundred concubines, all the riches in the world, servants. All right. He was he was the man. This is his sentiment. That's why I say this is my favorite book. Because when you really, really get into it, everything is vanity and vexation of spirit until the kingdom come. And it said, for he cometh in vanity and, de and departeth in darkness and his name shall be covered with darkness. Because when he died, everybody going to know him as a man who was just going through shit. You know what I'm saying? And, and then, you know, people don't understand why people go through things. People look at it like, oh, the, the same people who are cursed <laughs> looking at you like you curse, even though you blessed being chastised. But the point that Solomon is saying is that. It's vanity to go through this shit. It's vanity. And I understand his sentiment because he's not saying that it's no, it's it's not for no reason. He just speaking like this is not living. So what is the conclusion of, of the matter? That's the last scripture in, in Ecclesiastes chapter 12. Fear the most high, keep his commandments. But let's continue. So it say, moreover, he have not seen the son. He have not seen the son nor any known any things. This have more rest than the other. <laughs> yeah, though he live a thousand years twice told, yet he have seen no good. Do not all go to one place. So, you know, the, going back to the scripture now. So behold, happy is a man who the most high corrective. Therefore, despise not the chastening of the Lord. That's very, very hard. So when we read these scriptures, right, we understand what to do. The hard thing is doing it. Galatians 5 and 16 tell you perfectly that the that the flesh and the spirit wharf. 
So the spirit inside of you is what keeps you going. That's the spiritual antenna to the Lord. The flesh is the spiritual antenna to the demons. That's the fight. But who wins? Yeah, how will Bashim have a shot? Of course, the spirit. That's why you're still here. But so I think about these things. So I got people and I know they don't. I know their sentiments about me. It's different than what I see, of course, because I know the scriptures. I got a best friend in the world who is my brother. He know me very, very well. I've been knowing him since the third grade. So he's seen my life. My life always been a life of just barely making it, getting by, things not going my way, some bullshit always happening. You know, his life is the total opposite. He ain't have no kids. You know, he he travels whenever he want. He got a job where he just got a whole bunch of PTO, which is paid time off. He could just travel and shit. And he, he living good. The opposite of my life. So if I start talk to him about God or whatever. I, and, and I don't, I'm just saying if I did, I know for a simple fact, he'd be like, what my, he won't, he, he probably won't say this, but he'll say it in his mind. Like I, my life is 10 times better than you. So the point that I'm making of this video is that you got people out here who don't go through shit really. And then people think that prosperity is godliness and it's a total opposite. So, Glory in your infirmities, man. Praise the Lord that you actually go through something that you are deemed worthy to go through something. And it's hard. It's hard. Let me get this and let me finish the other one real quick. This, this is what the Lord demand of you. Like I say, everything is easier said than done, but do it to the best of your ability. Whether a man be rich or poor, if he have a good heart, which is your mind towards the Lord, he shall at all times rejoice with a cheerful countenance. So you actually got to rejoice with a cheerful countenance while you're going through things. And of course, you say, yeah, man, that shit hard as hell. Hell yeah, it's hard, but it's worth it. I'm talking about. So the easiest way to do it is take a scale back and really think. Imagine your life going all good. And in the moment, you want your life to go all good. But is it really worth it? If we all must come to the judgment seat. You want to be in the same um, stead as a LeBron James? Well, he just broke the um, the all time scoring record. And that's all ESPN is talking about right now. He got his glory on this side. The scripture said, woe to them that are rich for they have received their consolation. We haven't received our consolation yet. Verse 18, for he make of sword and bind them up. He wanted his hand make whole. And that's what that's the thing. This is going to happen when the kingdom come. Everything that you go through right now is going to be like a dream. Matter of fact, what is that? I'm going to read through this. A song of degrees when the Yahweh turn again, the captivity of Zion. We were like them that dream. Now imagine that you got all of us in captivity. I'm talking about Israelites, but you have people who sold they sold for crumbs and they don't even feel like they're in captivity. Imagine that. Then it said, then was our mouth filled with laughter and our tongue with singing. This is going to happen in the kingdom. Then said they among the heathen, Yahweh have done great things for them, which is the elect. And then eventually all Israel, Yahweh have done great things for us, which is the elect. We are glad. Turn again our captivity, O Yahweh, as the streams in the south. They that sow in tears shall reap in joy. This is what we go through, but it's worth it. This is what, this is what we're going to get if we endure to the end. He go forth and weepeth, being bearing precious seed, shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing in sheaves with him. All right. Which is we're we, we going to actually reap. All right. We're going to reap. Ain't going to be no more famine. We're going to have plenteousness, man. We're going to have the corn and wine, the milk and honey, as the Lord calls it. You know, we're going to get that, man. So the Lord is the one. That do these things. So when you're going through something, look at it from this aspect. And I'm talking to myself first. I'm getting better. That's why I'm making this video because I'm actually able, I'm more confident to speak about this right now. Because I've been through things and still go through things, but I'm still here. I'm still here. And that's what it's all about, man. And then, let me see. 
Because what it's all about, you know, people don't like to get into their personal life and that's good. Ain't nobody's business. I do. But it might help somebody, you know. That's why the Lord said it. But he that prophesies speaketh unto men to edification means to build up, exhortation, and comfort. All right? So you post to build up, motivate, and comfort. So now... This is what inspired the lesson. Lesson, the first scripture, you know, be, you know, despise not the chastening of the Lord. And then I'm just, I was thinking about this scripture next, but the Spirit brought in all the other scriptures. I really only had Job in this scripture in my mind, but it said, "Now I rejoice, not that ye were made sorry, but that ye sorrow towards repentance." I just added a word, but ye that sorrow to repentance. For ye were made sorry after a godly manner that you might receive damage by us in nothing. So what the scripture is saying is that through the preaching, through finding out the understanding of what, what life really is about. Now you have a broken and contrite spirit. Let's get let's get that. This, this what this is the state that is supposed to put you in. This what the Lord light in. Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart and save as such saveth such as a contrite spirit so when you are in that um spirit the lord delights in that those are the ones he dealing with the humble not the proud he said he resisted the proud all right and give grace up to the lowly but it said for godly sorrow work of repentance to salvation not to be repented of but the sorrow of the world work of death because like I said, you see people out here laughing, smiling, enjoying life, but you going through hell. Don't despise the chastening of the Lord because you still here and you still have everything that you need. I always say this. We enter into a time where the things that you have right now and you complain about not having enough. You're going to wish you had when we're going to be pilgrims on the earth. You're going to wish that you could sit your ass down on the couch. But at the end of the day, the Lord said he's going to save us in that time. And I, and I'm I'm here for it, cause it's inevitable. This is what this is the this is the straight gate. You got to go through that gate to get to the um, you know, to the why, you know, and with the why when you go to Second Edward seven, it's talking about a, a field, a field, filled with goodly things. So um, but so 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 um, lost my train of thought. That's Satan. Uh, 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 oh yeah. So now when you don't have that thought process of being chastened of the Lord and James two and five, he blessed the poor to be rich in faith, to inherit the kingdom in, in your life. It's not, even if you work a nine to five, you still, you consider poor, but you're not, you know, in a state of being down. Like I said, my, my, my brother in the world, he fucking shit. You know what I'm saying? He works a nine to five, but he's still able to do what he wants for the most part. He don't got no children, so he he able to move around. He like he 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 living life. You know what I'm saying? So he ain't looking at it like I'm poor and and I'm so down and out. He don't he he don't even understand that. So in a time where this world be turned upside down, could the devil come down with great wrath? He's going to be more hurt and devastated than a man who been being chastised all the way up until that point. But the Lord promised us deliverance in that point and destruction to those at that point. For behold, this selfsame thing that you sorrow after a godly sort with carefulness and rot in you, ye what clearing of yourself, ye what indignation, ye what fear, ye what vehement desire, ye what zeal, ye what revenge, in all things ye have approved yourself to be clear in this matter. So now we have a clear conscience of what life is about. And now we understand that having a broken and contrite spirit, going through the chastening of the Lord, which when you go into the word chastening in the Hebrew is mawasar, which means discipline. And discipline brings correction. He's correcting you. He's purging you. You becoming a better man each day. The inward man renew itself day by day and outward man perish. So you're supposed to be being a better man in the process. So that's what it's all about. You know, so I think about that. So why people in the world don't go really go through nothing. Like I said, our people are so conditioned 
and content with what we have, but not understanding what we sh- what we should have. Like I said, you give a nigga a blunt, PlayStation, a bottle, he good. He in heaven. He can live in the hood, hear gunshots every night. He's still good. You give him a you give him a flat screen TV. He good. That's how that's how much our people is conditioned because they don't look past this place. They don't look, you know, for better. They look for better in this world, man. And our glory is not in this world. So, you know, hopefully, you know, your um, my thoughts materialize and help somebody and. You know, it helps me. You know, I love doing lessons like this because it gets me through. And hopefully we just continue to endure to the end. Pray for that strength to endure to the end. We almost out of here. And Shalom.